So I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Donna Handlin, and I'm a student support facilitator in Spring Branch ISD, and I coordinate the dual credit and dual enrollment programs for the district. Um, we are very fortunate tonight to have Kyle Beasley with us from the University of Texas on-ramps program. And Kyle is going to kick off this evening and share with us the information about the UT on-ramp program. And then I will wrap up and talk about how the, the dual credit and the dual enrollment fit together at Stratford High School. So without further ado, take it away, Kyle. Thank you, Donna. Um, before I go ahead and get started, let me make sure that the slide is sharing appropriately. Did you see the slide you're change? Still in you're in presentation. No. Every time, every I know, it does time. that to me as well. Is it still in presentation mode? Nope, you're on the, there you go. It's working now. All righty. For sure. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I hope everyone is having a great day. Um, as Donna said, my name is Kyle Beasley. I'm the Senior Partnerships Coordinator at the University of Texas at Austin and with the OnRamps program. Um, I've been with the program since 2018. Prior to, I was actually working in college admissions at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Um, I always think it's important for me to mention my background just because it definitely informs the way I talk about the program and where I see the value. So over the course of the next 25, 30 minutes or so, depending on if I'm long-winded, surprise, I always am. Um, hopefully I'm giving you some insight into what our program has to offer. Hey, do you want to um, hear this? The benefit is uh, to your students. So without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. So with the graphic that you see here on the screen, um, this is actually a representation of a study done by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board um, in 2019. Essentially, it took a sample size of 100 um, eighth graders and followed their progression through higher education um, starting in the fall of 2007. So essentially out of this cohort of 100 students that they sampled, um, 54 of those students enrolled in institutions of higher education, but only 23 of those students went on to actually earn a post-secondary credential. As you can see from the bottom of the screen there, you can see exactly what those credentials are. Um, that was one certificate, five associate's degrees, and 17 bachelor's degrees. Um, am I good? Um, if we could please ask everyone to mute so that there is not feedback, we would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sorry, Kyle, go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Um, so essentially of that, of that initial sample size of 100 students, only 23 of those students went on to persist and succeed and actually complete a post-secondary credential. Um, at the bottom portion of the screen there, you can see the breakdown of what those credentials were. Um, but all in all, typically when I show folks this graphic, um, they're surprised a little bit. You'd like to think that here in the state of Texas, we're doing a lot better than this. And in fact, we actually are. But the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of different ways that you can look at this information um, and interpret it. But coming from the enrollment management side of things, I think what is most prevalent um, is that clearly there is a misalignment between the expectations that we set for our students while they're in high school um, than what they actually encounter as they make that transition into a post-secondary learning environment. So this study right here informs a lot of the work that we do here at OnRamps in a sense that we are really looking to disrupt the system and really make sure that we are preparing our students in realigning those expectations and enabling our students to really experience college before college. Now, the next graphic that you see here on the screen, this two times more likely figure is one that I'm going to refer back to um, numerous times over the course of the presentation. Um, and essentially a study was done that shows that students who complete just one dual credit course while in high school, um, that student is doubling their chances of persisting in completing college. What I think is really important to point out here is that nowhere in this sentence does it say a student needs to walk out of that course with an A. Nowhere in there does it say that a student needs to walk out um, of the course with a B. It is students who sim simply complete 
a dual credit course. At Honoris, we like to extrapolate this and say that it's not just dual credit, but it's also dual enrollment, AP, IB, any advanced academic opportunity because it is the experience that these advanced academic courses provide that is going to equip students with those skills that they need to persist and succeed. It is that exposure to the college level curriculum. It is this exposure to college level assessments and the learning environment so that when students finally make that jump into that post-secondary learning environment, they already know what to expect. So please hold with you for this presentation, this two times more likely figure as it is really, really important. Now, both of those points that I made on those previous slides informs the mission that we have at OnRamps, and that is to increase the number and diversity of students who are engaged in these learning experiences as they align with leading research universities. So we wanna make sure that any student that is looking to make that jump into a post-secondary learning environment, be it UT or any other college or university um, around the country or around the world, that they've had that opportunity to engage early on so that you've built that capacity in yourself so that you can persist and succeed. We really hold this mission um, high in, in high regards and it truly does inform everything that we do. Um, so hopefully you get the sense of that um, as I'm communicating this presentation to you um, over the course of the next 20 minutes or so. But in terms of what our courses look like um, and what they are grounded in, it's these five points right here. So first and foremost, academic rigor. Um, at OnRamps, we are offering our authentic courses to students while they're in high school. So the courses that we offer through OnRamps are some of the same courses that our residential students are engaging with right now on our UT campus or in a COVID society in virtual learning environments as well. Um, so they are not watered down in any way, shape or form. When things change in our residential course, we try to do our best to maintain that alignment and those modifications are made in our OnRamps courses. Um, oftentimes we get a little skepticism and say, saying that, hey, like, how are you going to um, engage my student in this learning environment when they're still in high school? Um, and a lot of that comes down to the points that I made before. We want our students to experience college before college. So we are expecting our students to rise to that occasion and you are going to be challenged in our courses. So if you thought that students um, that are listening in, if you thought that you'd be able to get away with coming in, um, sitting in the back of the class, uh, turning in your homework assignments every now and then looking at your notes and successfully passing the class um, without having to study, sorry to say that that is not the case with the on-ramps learning environment. Um, and a lot of that comes from the second point on the screen and that's quality instruction. Um, the courses that we offer at OnRamps make use of very intentionally selected pedagogies um, that are selected by our faculty members. So our faculty members have been um, educators for many, many years, and they have facilitated these courses at Austin for many years. So in doing so, they have researched the best pedagogies that are um, that support not only student learning, but the student application of knowledge. So that's why these pedagogies are applied to our OnRamps courses. So our courses are going to feel a little bit different. Students, you are actively going to be expected to contribute, and that plays into the last three points on um, the slide here. We want our students to engage. We want you to have that opportunity to collaborate with your peers, and we want you to be able to engage in discussions with perspectives and ideas that differ from your own, as we truly feel that not only is this going to be um, early exposure to the learning environments that you might encounter as you make that transition into college, but it is also a microcosm of what you expect as you're engaging in the real world, be it in your social life or in a professional setting. So it is all five of these points here that really make up the on-ramps experience. Um, and we really think that we have a good thing going here. Um, I'm gonna pause right there because um, I've been talking a mile a minute. Are there any questions in the chat so far? There's no questions, but we need everybody to mute their um, microphones. We still have several people not muted. Thank you. All righty, well, I will keep going. All right, so the graphic that you see here on the screen um, is important because oftentimes it's like folks understand what it is that we have to offer, um, but they're curious about the structure. So on the top half of the screen there, you will see the dual credit um, experience. Um, and that's typically something that uh, parents and students are familiar with. There's typically one instructor who's contracted to a local institution of higher ed. Um, and that individual is the one that is facilitating the course. They are the individual that are, that are providing the lessons. They are the ones that are um, doing the grading. They are the ones that are um, deriving the syllabus. 
Um, and that individual then determines the grade at the end of the course. And that grade is transcribed both on your high school transcript and on a transcript from that local institution of higher education. So that's the dual credit learning environment, simple and straightforward. Then if you shift your eyes to the bottom portion of the screen, it looks like there is a two-way split there. Um, so first question, is my student taking two separate classes? Not technically. So essentially we'll start with this top row here. So there is going to be an instructor that is on the Stratford campus. This individual is the instructor that your student will see on a daily basis. This individual was trained by UT Austin faculty and by the on-ramps program to administer the course content that is derived by the UT Austin faculty member. So over the course of the academic year, these two individuals, um, your instructor locally at Stratford and the institution, uh, the instructor of record at UT Austin are working in tandem throughout the academic year to deliver the course to you. It's not as though We've trained this individual for a couple hours and then we throw them off to the wolves. This individual spends significant time in the summer engaging with our faculty and with our staff to not only um, build up their capacity and their knowledge base of the course content, but also reviewing the best ways to administer the course. They're familiarizing themselves with the pedagogy, the assessments to make sure that your students are fully engaged in this learning experience and that it's going to be a positive one. So again, they are working in tandem over the course of the academic year. Now, the reason why there is a split here is that there are going to be two syllabi, syllabi um, for this on-ramps experience. There is going to be a syllabus that is derived locally based on your local policies that your high school instructor um, normally would in your non-on-ramps courses. Um, and there's also going to be a syllabus derived by UT Austin grading policy um, and grading skills. Now, for my adults that are in the room, you might be familiar um, um, even in thinking about your own college experience possibly um, where there were certain college classes that you took where there might've been one problem set per unit, one midterm and one final, and it was only a small handful of grades that contributed to your college grade um, that was transcribed at the end of the term. Everyone um, in the room hopefully can remember their high school experience, even though it was a little bit longer for some of us um, than our students that are in the room. Um, but in the high school grade book, there are typically numerous homework assignments. There might be participation grades, there might be pop quizzes, there might be a midterm, there might be a final um, projects, and there might be extra credit opportunities. So there are a lot more grades that contribute towards your high school grade. Now, again, this is an opportunity for our students to experience college before college. So that is why there, is, there are two separate transcripts. Those transcripts and the work that your students um, are engaged with over the course of the academic year, your students are aware of which assignments will count towards which grade. Now, typically the assessments that your students are engaging with, those assessments are going, those grades are going to fall on both transcripts, but your local instructor has the opportunity to supplement um, with any additional assignments as they normally would in a non on ramps course. So based on the two syllabi, your students are going to receive two unique grades. You're going to receive a grade that is derived based on your local grading policies that your student would be normally familiar with. And your student is also going to receive a grade derived based on the UT Austin grading policies. Now, what makes on-ramps a unique experience and a low risk one for students is that at the end of the term, your student will have the opportunity to accept or decline the grade that they receive from UT Austin. So say your student goes through the course, um, they're taking the pre-calculus course and they get to the end and they've earned a B minus. B minus, solid grade, um, but maybe you are planning to go into the Cockrell School of Engineering at UT Austin and you don't want that grade to follow you. You've had the, the college experience, you've been able to be exposed to that college learning environment, the college level assessments and have that college experience, but you can get to the end of the course and say, you know what, it was a great experience, but I want to decline that grade. You can select decline and that grade goes away and it is never uh, transcribed anywhere for the college, for UT Austin. So it's as if you never engage with that course. At the same time, you are still having that grade that you've earned based on your high school grading policies. And that is the grade that is going to be factored into your GPA and your local class rank policies. 
So it is a low risk experience in a sense that you're still going to be graded as a high school student for the high school side of things, but you're also going to get an authentic college grade so you know where you stand um, for, the, for the university curriculum. I'm gonna pause right there to see if there are any questions in the chat because this is typically um, a hot topic. There are a significant number of questions that are coming in on the chat. Um, one of the questions, for example, is can you attend office hours with a UT teacher or go to a UT writing lab when you're enrolled in the course? Yeah, so I know in the past, and I can't, and I'm saying in the past because I haven't familiarized myself uh, this year, I know in the past that students would be able to go into their Canvas learning management system. So that's the online platform that students will log into to access their textbooks. That's where they're gonna go to turn in some of their homework assignments. There was an option in there where students can reach out and communicate directly with their um, instructor on the university side of things. So they're definitely able to reach out and communicate in that in that way via email. Um, and I believe some of the instructors have like a phone number. Um, but in terms of like actual physical office hours that students can set up via Zoom, I'm not sure if that is possible. Um, as we during the shift to COVID, a lot of things have changed. Um, but you will definitely have the opportunity to receive feedback directly from the instructor of record on the university side of things. Um, there was a second part of that question that uh, that I totally blanked on. Um, no, that was, it was the office hours and, and con connecting with the UT instructor. And I think you pretty much answered that. There the writing um, was, a, part, I think, was there the right question about the writing center? There was, yes. Okay. So for the students that are in the rhetoric course with your UT EID, which we'll talk about in a couple uh, slides coming up, um, you will have access to all of the library services. And that includes um, access to the university writing center. So then we had a question about a dead, the deadline to decline or accept a grade. How long after the, the grade do students have to accept or decline the, the grade? For sure. So once grades are posted, um, and it'll depend on the course that you're taking, um, once grades are posted, students will be notified by their instructor and also via email to log in and view your college grade. Of course, over the course of the semester, you can always log in and see your college grade as assignments are getting posted, but once your final grade is posted, you will be notified. At that point, there is a window of one week typically um, for students to log in and make that decision. Um, during that period, um, OnRAMPS provides a module for students um, to go in and um, that's going to equip you with a, a few lines of thought um, to consider before making that decision. Um, oftentimes, if students are planning to go to institutions other than UT Austin, um, they're wondering, okay, well, if I accept this credit, is that university going to take the grade or are they just going to take the credit? So we provide a small module for students to go through and navigate um, some of that line of questioning um, and what to ask the admissions officers and registrars um, of the institutions that they are interested in attending. Okay, another question is, will the University of Texas frown upon students not accepting the dual enrollment grade? Not at all. Um, like I said previously, if a student declines that grade, that grade is never anywhere. So at UT, like if your student was to then uh, take this course to say as a junior and then apply as a senior to UT, um, they will never know that you um, took that course because on your high school transcript, it'll your pre-calculus course, it'll just show up as like pre-calculus. It won't show up as um, on-ramps pre-calculus. So the only way that we will know um, that you took um, the on-ramps course on the UT UT side of things um, in terms of transcript is if you accept that grade and a transcript is actually generated. Thank you. Another question is, can you still do the second portion of the class if you decline the UT grade first semester? Yes, so typically, um, so for our STEM courses, um, those are actually stretched out over the course of the academic year, and we'll talk about that on a later slide. But um, for our students that are taking like our rhetoric and our history courses, um, those are split where there is a fall and there is a spring course. So say, for example, you take the fall semester of rhetoric and you decline that grade. Um, as you're engaged in that second um, course for the spring, um, you can that is completely independent of that first course. So you can decline the credit in the first semester and then accept it for the second for our humanities courses. Okay, and the next question is, if, um, if a student is interested in going to the UT School of Dentistry, would the dual enrollment credits obtained in high school transfer over to the college? 
So any credits that you are earning through UT Austin um, are going to be recognized by UT Austin. Um, in terms of the actual admissions policies, in terms of like what courses students need to take to be accepted to those programs, um, I don't work in admissions and I don't want to speak for them. So I definitely recommend getting in contact with those admissions departments specifically. But when it comes to transferring on ramps courses into UT Austin, you won't have any difficulty because they are UT Austin courses. Okay, and so in the um, interest of the time and you getting through your presentation, um, we'll go ahead and get started. And if you have put a question in the chat, we will get to those questions and we may just save them for a little bit later because some of the questions are going to be answered in Kyle's presentation as he moves forward. For sure. All right, so the courses that you see here on this current slide are the courses that we offer through the on-ramps course suite. The only exception that is not up here yet is our on-ramps biology course, um, and that's because it was being piloted this year. But the top two rows of um, graphics here um, represent the STEM offerings that we offer at UT, um, at UT and with on-ramps, um, and these are courses that um, range between three and four semester credit hours, depending on if that course has a lab or not. Um, I believe um, at Stratford, you offer the geoscience course, the pre-calculus course, the chemistry course, and college algebra. I'm trying to make sure I'm remembering those correctly. Um, but I think I hit the STEM courses that are offered, and you also offer the rhetoric and the history courses. So I mentioned it briefly before, but the STEM courses in the top two rows are semester long courses traditionally at UT Austin, but for our on-ramp students, um, in order to support this being a low risk um, experience and in order for your local instructors to build in the, the necessary scaffolding to make sure that students are grasping that course content, um, we take those semester long courses and stretch them out over the course of the academic year. So this geoscience course on the UT side of things would be a course um, that is stretched out over the course of the academic year, but on your high school side of things that will typically manifest in two individual high school um, semester grades. Um, for the rhetoric um, and our history courses at the bottom, you will see the fall and spring designations and that's what I was referring to in terms of being able to accept that credit independent of one another. Um, these courses, because they are unique semester long, in completing the full sequence, if a student is earning that credit, you are actually earning six semester credit hours as opposed to the three or four units that you might be earning um, with our STEM courses at the top portion. So in terms of what the academic year looks like and what registration for on-ramps looks like, um, I'm gonna run through this timeline graphic that we have here on the screen and it begins in August. So in August is when your students are going to formally enroll in the college portion of the course. So in August, alongside your instructor, your student is going to be instructed to log in and create their UTEID. Um, for my um, Texas X's in the room, um, you might be familiar with a UTEID as that is your UT Austin credential that signifies the fact that you are a UT Austin student. So once your student creates their UTEID, that UTEID is going to grant them access to that Canvas learning management system that I talked about earlier. Um, you might have used Canvas in some of your dual credit courses if you've taken them prior, or you might have older siblings. Somehow you might be familiar with it, but it is an online uh, learning management system um, that students will go and access for their textbooks, for any course materials, any course related technologies, um, but it's also a place that they're going to go to to take some of their assessments, quizzes, tests, um, etc. So in once a student has enrolled in the course um, and created their UTEID, they are set and then the course begins. Um, for students that are taking our rhetoric and our history courses, um, they will complete the same process in December um, in enrolling for their spring course. Now, this January eligibility enrollment period, um, this is for um, our students that are engaged in the year long courses. So if you're taking any of the STEM courses, again, pre-calculus, geoscience, chemistry, and college algebra, um, in January, at the midpoint of the course, um, you are going to be notified of your standing in the course. At this point in time, if you have a D minus or higher, you are passing the course and you are on track to earning the college credit. 
in that instance that you have that D minus or higher, there's nothing you need to do. Just keep trucking along. Obviously, you want to study a little bit harder to make sure that you can exit the course with a grade that you are going to be satisfied with, um, but you are on track to earning the college credit. Now, for whatever reason, you do not have a D minus or higher. So if you are not passing the course, um, this is not your off ramp to say like, all right, well, I'm not passing. So get me out of this course experience and get me into something else. There is still another way for you to maintain um, eligibility for earning that credit. And that is through the submission of TSI, TSIA scores, um, SAT scores, or ACT scores. Um, what those particular scores are will be in your college syllabus um, that students will receive um, during the first weeks of their honors experience. But in the event that you do not have um, that score necessary to opt you back into that eligibility, we never want a student to say, all right, well, if I'm not going to earn the credit, there's no point in me being in this course. Because um, again, if you refer back to that two times more likely figure that I mentioned in the beginning, there's a lot of value in staying the course. Hey, you might not have um, earned the credit this go round, but who's to say that in this um, in the spring, if we're taking our rhetoric? Uh, no, school, dad grabbed it, but that's um, my spare shoe. That you might not um, earn the credit for the spring, or um, maybe the following year as you're engaged with the dual credit or AP or. IB course experience. Who's to say that you won't earn the credit for that experience later on? So again, the credit. Yes, it's it's great to earn the credit, but I'm a huge proponent of the experience that our courses provide. Um, in January, this accept or decline for the fall course uh, credit. This is for our students that are, again, engaged in those rhetoric and history courses. In January, this is when you will be notified of your grade and you will be expected to go in and accept or decline um, that experience um, or the credit from that experience. In April, um, the same thing will take place. Students will log in and be um, of their status. And if you are passing the course, you will be prompted to accept or decline that credit. And in May, things will be finalized and wrapped up. The reason why there's a May high school course grade, this is just a reminder that the college semester typically ends before the high school semester. Um, students, that's not a get out of class free card. There's plenty of content that's going to carry you through um, the end of the academic year. But this is just to indicate again, that there is a separate high school and college grade that students are going to be receiving from the honors experience. So in terms of the value of the on-ramps courses, um, there's a lot of things. Again, I'm a huge proponent of the experience, but of course the transferability is a huge one. Oftentimes parents and students are wondering, all right, well, are these courses going to transfer? Um, and the answer is yes. Um, because our on-ramps courses are all Texas core curriculum, they are guaranteed by law to transfer to every public college um, or university in the state of Texas. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Now, I get the follow-up question often. Well, what if I want to go to a private school? What if I want to go to Rice? What if I want to go to SMU? What if I want to go to NYU? Um, are the courses going to transfer? And we've had a lot of success in getting our in our getting on ramps courses to transfer to other institutions. I can't say 100% without a doubt they're going to transfer everywhere, but we've had a lot of success. And there's a slide coming up a little bit later um, that kind of validates that point. But again, we always encourage our students to reach out to the colleges and universities that they are interested in attending to make sure exactly how that course is going to transfer over. Is it the credit? Is it the grade? Is it both? always recommend our students getting in contact with those officials. Um, in terms of savings, anytime you can take advantage of a college experience while in high school, you're likely doing so um, at a much lower cost than if you were paying tuition at that institution. Um, Spring Branch um, actually covers the cost of on-ramps courses um, for students. So you have the opportunity to take advantage of a UT Austin course completely free of charge. And I mean that in a sense that you don't have to go out and buy any additional textbooks um, or course technologies and things like that. All of that is included in the on-ramps course. Um, another perk, if anything, you don't have to carry around a large textbook. Everything is digital. Um, so students, save your back. Um, go ahead and throw in an extra snack or something. Um, but huge savings um, there. In terms of matriculation and retention, again, by engaging in this experience, early on, you're equipping yourself with those skills that you are going to need to persist and ultimately complete and succeed in obtaining that post-secondary credential. And by earning credit early while you're in high school, you're potentially reducing your time to degree. Um, maybe it's freeing up space for to graduate a semester early, add, an ad add in an additional minor, um, or maybe um, spending a semester abroad. But Reducing that time to degree and being able to get out and not paying um, college and university tuition for an extra term 
is a huge cost savings um, that you might not realize yet. Um, I'm just going to keep going and then we can take questions later just because that's only great. Handful of slides left. Now, in terms of what the experience looks like in an on-ramps course, students often step in and it feels a little strange. Um, so during those first couple of weeks, um, support network for students, you might hear some, some interesting rumbles like, okay, it feels a little strange. It's a little bit different than the other courses that I've uh, taken. There might be instances where your student feels that they don't understand. They might have instances that they feel, so, some instances of self-doubt um, and then ultimately, a lot of students will encounter that first exam and then will be shocked. Um, they might not have had an experience where they've taken an exam and, and not received the mark that they um, normally have received in the past. Um, and they might be feeling, all right, well, fight or flight, like I'm ready to fly. Um, and parents, I know you want to support your child, but please, 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 please re resist the urge um, of encouraging them to jump ship. Um, again, going back to that experiential element of being exposed to this authentic college learning environment, there's a lot of value in this productive struggle. So this is typically the point in time where I remind students of the support network that they have in this instance. Of course, we have, they have their on-ramps instructor who is with them locally on the daily basis that is rooting for them, that is advocating for their success. Um, but also keep in mind that they have their support networks at home, they have their counselors, they have any other support structures that they might have access to um, at the Stratford campus. And then behind the scenes, just know that the UT Austin faculty and the honorance core staff and myself are rooting for your students to succeed in this endeavor. So oftentimes students feel the pep talk, feel the pep talk. Um, they might be a little bit skeptical at first, but most of our students decide to try again. They might seek different opportunities for assistance. It might be reaching out for clarification from the instructor of record um, on the college side of things. It might be asking additional questions of your peers who are in the course. Um, who knows, students might try to study for the first time. Um, oftentimes students um, have been able to navigate high school um, and not have to authentically study. Or maybe you studied in the past and you've been able to review your notes ahead of an exam, but now you need to try flashcards or try a study group or redoing problems um, from your homework. This is an opportunity, again, for you to build up all of those skills um, that are going to enable you to persist and succeed long term. Um, but you're doing so right now in a zip code that is familiar as opposed to being tens of 10, 100,000 miles away from home in your college. So again, that experience college before college um, mindset that we have at Honor is one that we really want our students to understand. And ultimately our students tend to realize that they were right to not give up and ultimately exit the course understanding the value in that productive struggle and that they now know what to expect from their college experience um, and hopefully be able to persist, succeed, complete and earn that post-secondary credential. So this slide is more summative in a sense that the honors course experience is not only about exposing students to the academic rigors of, of a college experience, but also some of those social expectations in terms of that self-advocacy, that time management, um, while doing so in an authentic learning environment. Our courses are high quality, again, because they are the same exact courses that our residential students are engaging with at UT Austin. So they're not watered down. So if your student is able to complete this course, um, they can say that, hey, like, I know that I have what it takes to succeed in college because I just completed a course from UT Austin. And again, by engaging, this is still a very much so low risk environment for exposure. Again, in thinking about the supports that students have access to, um, and about how our STEM courses are stretched out over the course of the academic year, and that when your student completes this experience, they still have that opportunity to find that credit. This is a really great opportunity, we feel, um, that we hope your students choose to engage with. So just by the numbers, I just want to highlight a couple um, figures here, even though these are um, from last year. Um, last year, we had around 29,000 students engaged in on-ramps courses. So this isn't just a small um, little um, hands, uh, subset of courses that we've thrown out and hoping they stick, um, but we have students all across the state um, engaged in these on-ramps courses, um, and they are supported by just under a thousand um, instructors who are engaged in robust professional learning and development 
over the course of the academic year. Um, and that's really manifested in the ballooning of our program partnerships. Um, and last year we had 151 districts. Um, and this year, I believe we were sitting around 190. So we are really, really, really did, yeah. um, about the growth that our program has seen. Um, and hopefully we continue to grow. Um, but this figure on the screen here, 90% of the students who are eligible at that eligibility window at that midpoint of the course, 90% of those students went on to successfully earn that credit. So in the year 1819, during that academic year, we conferred over 67,000 um, semester credit hours um, from UT Austin. So we're really excited about this figure. Um, I mentioned earlier very briefly about the transferability of on-ramps courses to institutions out of state. Um, so each dot here on the map represents a college or university that a student was able to tra successfully transfer on-ramps uh, credit. Um, so as you can see, of course, we have good saturation in the state of Texas, but we also have colleges and universities around the country um, that have accepted on-ramps credit as well. Um, and then these last two slides right here, um, just showcase um, a couple quotes um, from students who, uh, and it always does that and automatically plays, but they were just <laughs> a couple quotes uh, that show um, the on-ramps experience um, from, wow, I like completely got frazzled there because it's doing its own thing. But um, it was quotes from students who, I'll put them up here now, um, who have engaged with the on-risk course um, and hopefully give you a sense of kind of like what your students can expect um, by engaging. Um, but I will leave it at that and open it up for questions as I know I've been talking a mile a minute. So Kyle, one of the questions that um, we didn't get to before, but I wanted you to get through with the presentation before we um, entered into that. Um, the question was for dual enrollment English, are the papers of all the students in a high school class graded by the same professor or multiple professors? And then will the professor grading the papers change during a semester or from one semester to the next? So within the individual, so like within the fall and with the spring, because again, there are two separate courses, we typically try to keep the grading um, similar just because we know that to in order to mark a student's progression, um, having the student grade, like being able to see the progression of the grade with, from the same perspective is important. Um, now, with the, when it comes to that spring semester course, it is typically going to be um, the same grader for that term, but I couldn't say that it's going to be the same because they are two you uniquely different courses. Unique courses. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, another question was, if I choose to keep the grade to show in college, will that grade get calculated into my college GPA? So if your student is planning to go to UT Austin, yes, because this is a UT Austin course experience, um, that grade will show up on your UT Austin transcript and it will be calculated into your GPA. Um, as that factors into institutions that aren't UT Austin, again, we want our students to reach out to um, the admissions offices and the registrars um, at those institutions to make sure um, and get that, hear it directly from the source as to how that grade and that credit is going to factor into their experience there. But for UT Austin, yes, it will count. Donna? Yes. Basically, what we have found is that the UT um, credit will transfer, but not the grade. So it doesn't go into a GPA at another school it's usually just the credit. Right. And so what we usually also typically do is say to the students, if you want to know how the grade will be counted at the institution of your choice, contact the admissions office at that institution and um, have them tell you exactly how they will look at that college credit. So then Another person said, um, we keep speaking of the credit and they're asking, is it just a pass fail on the college transcript or is it an actual grade? So we used to offer a pass fail option, but now it is, um, we, it is strictly letter grade. So your student will have a letter grade that they have the opportunity to accept or decline. Excellent. Um, the next question, and I'm not sure, Jana, if you could clarify who does the exam from UT or Stratford High School. I'm, I'm not sure exactly 
um, to what you're referring. So if you want to unmute and pop in to clarify your question. Donna, I think the question is like in the U.S. history class, the UT professor that's working with that particular teacher creates the exam and the uh, Stratford instructor is the one who's delivering the instruction, making sure they're prepared for the exam and then the students take the exam. So the, the test is coming from UT. Yep, that is correct. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. So then um, uh, this is a good question. This is another good question. Why would a student accept or reject the credit? Can you talk about the pros and the cons of accepting the UT credit versus not accepting the credit? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll use the example of a student who might be going to UT Austin. Again, like if a student is um, going to be a say they've taken the honors pre-calculus course and they are planning to study engineering. Um, so because it is a math course or because it is a math course and it is like a major preparatory course, um, they might not want that grade to appear on a transcript. So say when you're applying to the Cockrell School of Engineering and you are applying for mechanical engineering and you've, uh, you submitted your transcripts, because it is a transcribed letter grade, they can see, hey, like you might've gotten a, a D minus. Some students might feel as though that is not the best indicator of um, their ability to succeed in that program. So that might be an instance where you want to decline that credit. Um, because again, if you're applying to UT Austin, it is a UT Austin transcript, it is a tra transcribed grade, that grade can be seen um, in that evaluation process. Um, in terms of uh, why a student might decline a grade um, otherwise, it could be a, an abundance of different reasons. Um, and some of that might come down to exactly how the institution that they're planning to attend um, intends to bring in that grade or bring or just the credit. So there's a lot of different factors um, that might um, contribute towards that decision. And again, you, uh, through honors, your student will be provided a module right around that except decline period that's going to give them a few things to consider um, before making that decision. So another question is, are the history tests essay tests, multiple choice tests, or both? Do you know? Um, off the top of my head, like, and I don't want to like tell you wrong, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, um, but I can communicate um, with you, Donna, tomorrow um, and get back with that answer. Excellent. Um, and then we had a question, do most people accept or decline the credit? Um, so it, it varies year to year, um, but um, based on like last year, the vast majority of our students ended up accepting our credits, accepting the credit. Donna, just to help you uh, uh, give a history of uh, Stratford High School, last year we had 114 students take uh, the English three dual enrollment and 110 took the credit. So that's only four declined the credit. Right, and that's what I was going to say that when we look at the Stratford High School data at the end of the year, I would say that we are well over 90% of the students accept the credit at UT. So thank you for that. Um, any other questions that deal with UT on ramps? We're gonna talk about the courses and kind of the order that courses happen here in just a second, but I do want to give anyone the opportunity to um, pop in with any additional questions. Kyle, I see one about the UT uh, syllabi, about the on-ramp syllabi being online. Can you address that question? Good yeah. question. Yeah, so your student at the start of the course, um, they will receive that uh, syllabus. Um, so I couldn't tell you what the syllabus is like, couldn't give you the syllabus right now because over the course of this semester and heading into the fall, um, there might be tweaks to the course, but early on in the course, your student will have access to that syllabus, um, typically within the first few days. As soon as you create that UTE ID and access that Canvas course, your student will have access to that syllabus over the course of the term. There's I think a question. The question sorry, is, Donna. I think that the question about the syllabus is if they wanted to access it right now to kind of get a feel for what the content is of that class, is, is there a way that they can access a 
syllabus now to get a feel for the course ahead of time? So not the syllabus, but I can definitely provide um, the course sheets and it'll cover all of the, like what the course is going to cover, like what topics, what subjects, and like exactly the extent of that. Um, so I will make sure to provide those um, to you, Donna, um, so that you can share them out with the community. Excellent. And I will share that with the counselors and then they can get that out um, to the community. Um, so another question, if you just transfer the credit to another university, won't the UT grades get calculated in the GPA when applying to grad school, med school, law school, et cetera? Again, I, I would answer that you need to talk to each of the, the universities that you're interested in because each college and university handles transfer credit differently. So um, it's hard to make just a blanket statement about that. Um, then someone asked about a sophomore taking chemistry DE, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. We're going to stick to just UT on ramps questions right now. Um, the number of students at Stratford who took credit for history. I don't have those numbers right off the top of my head, but I would tell you that it was well over 90% of the students accepted the grade. Um, the grades for history and generated a UT transcript. Um, I think last year we only had two to climb the grade. I think that's right too, Jim. That sounds very familiar to me. So then someone said, is DE the same as on ramps? And yes, DE is dual enrollment and that is the same thing as on ramps. So those are, the, those are the questions that have appeared in the chat. And so before we jump into the next section, I do want to give anyone who has a question the opportunity to ask an on-ramps question. It's not just a specific to Stratford High School question. Okay, if not, then I'm gonna go ahead and start the next part. Um, hold on just a sec here. I'm gonna, I'm, having the same issue as you, Kyle, and that I've got to make sure that it's showing the correct thing. So my display settings. So Donna, while you're working, just for parents, any student can take a DE course, even as a freshman, because if a student is eligible to be in Algebra two as a freshman, they can take a dual enrollment course. So it is open to any grade level whatsoever. Thank you for answering that, Jim. Okay, are you able to see my slideshow? Yeah, it's in like the regular PowerPoint screen. Perfect. And it's switched. Good deal. No. Okay, it, so. It oh, it did not? No. Okay, so let me try this again. <laughs> Huh. All right, let's try one more time. How about now? Yep, you're good. Perfect. Okay, so so that you know what is um, offered at Stratford High School um, for the dual enrollment. Um, the U.S. We want to first talk about the U.S. history, which at the University of Texas, those course numbers are listed there. It's three history 315K and 315L. You might hear it referred to as history 1301 or 1302 at, at some other um, university campuses or college campuses. And for the 11th grade students, they would enroll in the dual enrollment course for U.S. history, and that would take the place of their high school U.S. history course. So they'll earn their U.S. history credit as um, at the high school, as well as the opportunity to earn the U.S. history credit through the New University of Texas at Austin. And like Kyle said earlier, the history course is two separate courses so each semester. So there's the first history course will be in the fall and the second history course will be in the spring. So students will have the opportunity to earn six total history credits at the end of the year. That is paired with the English composition, I believe at Stratford Gym, is that required that if they enter the history, they also enter the composition? 
No, they can take either one. Okay, so it's no, it is not paired any longer. So the English composition class is also a two semester opportunity for students. So students will take the first part of rhetoric in the fall, the second part of rhetoric in the spring, and that takes the place of English three for those 11th grade students. So in this opportunity, if students take both the US history and the English composition their 11th grade year, then, and they accept the credit through the University of Texas at Austin, then they will earn um, a total of 12 college credits during that year, during their 11th grade year for just those two courses. And they will earn their history requirement and their English three requirement. Okay, and it's not moving, there we go. Some other dual enrollment courses that are offered at Stratford. Stratford also offers the college algebra through the University of Texas on ramps, which is the math 1314. That is for algebra two students. So the prerequisites for that course would be algebra one and geometry as recommended um, to have already been um, credit having been earned for that. Now, with the, the college algebra, as well as for the next three classes that we're going to be talking about, those are spread out over, it is one college class spread out over the course of the entire year at Stratford. So the students won't earn their college algebra grade for the University of Texas at Austin until May. And then at that point, they will determine whether to accept or decline the grade. So it is only, three hours over the course of the entire school year. Pre-calculus is exactly the same way and it's for any student who's interested in pre-calculus. The prereqs for that are algebra two and geometry. And that would, um, if they accept the credit, they will be earning the math 2312 credit at the University of Texas. The geoscience course is the same as the earth and space course at Stratford High School. So for students to take that, the prerequisites are biology or IPC and chemistry. And then next year will be the first year that Stratford is offering the chemistry 1311. And it is four credits because it has a lab component with it as well. And the requirement for that is that students have completed algebra one. So those are the UT on-ramps courses that are currently offered at Stratford. Do we have any questions before we move into the dual credit portion? And I'm not able to monitor the chat. So Jim or Crystal, if one of you could pop in, if there are some questions that we need to answer. Donna, I don't see anything. There's some uh, Stratford specific questions, but I don't think anything right now from what you've said, we'll address those at the end. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so let's talk about dual credit. Dual credit is a little bit different than the dual enrollment. You heard Kyle explain that dual enrollment, the students have a Stratford High School teacher and they have a University of Texas instructor. And those two instructors each teach portions of the class and students will earn a high school grade and they'll earn a college grade. Dual credit is a little bit different in that dual credit, they will have one instructor who is um, a, an HCC instructor. And that instructor, um, actually, when we are in non-COVID times, that those instructors actually come to Stratford High School this year, we are doing those courses online, um, online on a schedule. And we don't know what next year holds, that still remains to be seen. But in dual credit, the students will earn one grade, and that grade will count on their high school transcript as well as on their um, HCC college transcript. Just like the dual enrollment in terms of transferring, dual credit um, credit also transfers to any state public institution because that's a law that um, the state has in place, but it has to be a state public university. 
Now, other universities many times still accept the credit, even if they're private. But again, we recommend that students contact the universities um, of interest to make sure that the credit will transfer there. But in our partnership with Houston Community College, um, students also have the opportunity to earn some college credit. So one of the um, continuations that we have, so 12th grade students who participated in on-ramps English as 11th graders and on-ramps history as an 11th grader have the opportunity then to enroll in British literature, which is the English 2322 and 2323, 2323, and then government 2305 and 2306 during their senior year. Now, there is a caveat there, and that is in order for students to participate in the British literature, they must have accepted credit from the University of Texas for that English 1301 or English 1302. So as the students are working through that during their 11th grade year, they must accept credit for one of those English courses in order to participate in the dual credit British literature course in which the instructor from HCC um, comes in and actually works with the students on that. And then they, the students will also take the government class in the fall and in the spring as well. And again, that's taught by a Houston Community College adjunct instructor. So students will get their high school government credit and their English four credit um, and Correct me if I'm um, wrong, Jim, but I believe at Stratford High School, if you enroll in the English British literature as a senior, you also enroll in the government portion because of the way that the courses are blocked. So you'll have either English or history on the Monday and Wednesday, and on the Tuesday, Thursday, you would have the other course. That's correct that because correct? It, it, it's blocked based on our schedule. Our schedule is like a one-two block three, four, five, six, or seven, eight. And English is always taught on Monday, Wednesday. Government's always taught on Tuesday, Thursday. So it can't be an A day B schedule. So it's correct for that. The one thing is that we have not been doing is we have not required the students to have the history to get into the ECD program. They have to have the English because the English drives everything else. Correct. And the English scores actually then um, count for their college readiness um, portion of that. So, but in order for students, and I just want to reiterate this because there are always questions about it, but in order for students to take the British literature coursework, they must have accepted the grade from the University of Texas. In other words, they have to have generated a transcript from the University of Texas in order to take that next level of English at the college level. So if students took the English and the history as 11th graders, they earned 12 credit hours. If they then go on as seniors to take the English British literature piece and the government, they have the opportunity to earn an additional 12 hours of college credit um, in those two years. So at the end of that, um, senior year, they have the potential for earning 24 college credits um, during that time. And yet, and then if they took other on-ramps courses, then obviously they have the um, opportunity to earn even more. And there's always the question of a, what benefit is that? And there was a question in the chat about this earlier. How does this benefit me as a student? It benefits me as a student in that I have begun that trek toward whatever the degree is that I want to earn. And these are all courses that are part of the core curriculum for colleges and universities. So you're getting those basics out of the way in high school. And then you're starting college at a, at, at a sophomore level sometimes or higher or just right short of being a sophomore. Now, if students do not participate in the dual enrollment UT on-ramps English as 11th graders, they still have the opportunity to participate in dual credit English as a senior. And that is taught by Susan Sharp at Stratford High School. 
and she teaches the composition class that English 1301-1302 um, to seniors who have not taken the UT on ramps course. So that is for those 12th graders and it will count as their English four credit. There's another dual credit opportunity that will be starting next year at Stratford. Um, and that is biology 1308 and 1309. And students would have, again, the opportunity to earn six science credits for that biology. And the prerequisite to enter though that coursework is that students have to have completed high school biology and chemistry in order to enter into the biology class classes. And I believe that these biologies are for non-science majors. So if you are thinking about majoring in a science course in college, I would check with your university to see how biology 1308 and 1309 factor into your degree plan. So again, the benefits of participating in the dual enrollment dual credit, you have a great opportunity to earn anywhere from six to 40 college credits while you're still at Stratford High School. And it is tuition free. Currently, Spring Branch is very fortunate, or the Spring Branch students are very fortunate in that the district currently pays the tuition fees for both the UT on ramps and the um, HCC dual credit programs. As Kyle mentioned earlier, for the UT on-ramps program, the textbook is all part of their Canvas um, class, so they are, there is no outside textbook fee. However, for the HCC classes, traditionally there has been a textbook that needs to be purchased for those classes, um, but we do have need-based scholarships that are available. We don't want need to keep someone from participating in a dual credit class. So if, if you are considering enrolling in the dual credit course and you have a concern about the textbooks, please reach out to your counselors and we can work to see if you can qualify for the um, district to provide you the textbook for use during that semester. And then this was a question that I saw come through the chat earlier about the GPA credit. All of the dual credit and dual enrollment courses at Stratford High School earn that weighted GPA credit the same as they would um, an AP class. Now, there is a little bit of difference and I did wanna just take a minute to talk about this. If you are enrolling in any dual credit courses through Houston Community College, there is a process and there is a set of paperwork that must be completed in order for you to participate. And the most important or the very important thing that has to happen, and if you're interested in this, I would do it now so that you have already taken care of this. Any student who wants to take dual credit through HCC must enroll at HCC or apply to HCC via the Apply Texas application no later than April 1st. So you will open the Apply Texas application. You will apply through the Apply Texas and then send that application to HCC. Within two to three days, you will receive a nine digit ID number from HCC. Write that number down and keep it in a safe place because you're going to have to have that number for identification purposes at HCC. So, and then there is a packet of forms that you will also have to complete to um, turn into your counselor and they'll have a deadline written on there by when they need you to turn return that um, paperwork to them. But the most important thing is if you are interested in taking any dual credit course through HCC, go on to the Apply Texas application now and go ahead and enroll at HCC so that then that is completed because HCC has that requirement that if you're going to participate, you must do that no later than April 1st. Donna, can I stop you for a second? Yep, we we're at questions, so go on ahead. So the dual enrollment, the students are in English 3 dual enrollment. We've already sent them the ECP um, paperwork through, the, uh, through their email this morning so that they would have that in their place. Their history teacher had already taught, started them working through the Apply Texas. So the 
students who are applying for ECP have already gotten the paperwork through the email and it's uh, PDF editable, like that you provided that. And we provided the exact course numbers that they're taking so that goes through. On the 11th and 12th, we're entering um, the uh, rising seniors will be entering their coursework. And if anybody signs up for the dual credit for Ms. Sharp or the dual credit for uh, the biotech, we're gonna send them the correct paperwork immediately. So the, the, the students will have the correct paperwork in their emails based on what the courses that they've chosen. So they don't have to guess what is the um, HCC paper, I um, HCC coursework. So we've already put that together the PDF files are already there. We have um, pretty well taken care of that and, and we'll have it ready just as soon as the students enroll. And we're gonna tell, the, tell our students that we want our paperwork back before spring break. Um, and thank you, Jim, for that. The other thing that I just saw a comment in the chat, and I think this is very important to talk about, um, for both the dual enrollment and the dual credit, as parents, you do not have access to, com um, to communicate with the instructors, especially through the University of Texas and any time that a UT adjunct in, or an HCC adjunct comes into to Stratford to work with the students. The students, once they are enrolled in a college course, whether it's dual enrollment or, or dual credit, they are considered college students at that institution. And so this is a great opportunity for your student to learn how to become an advocate for him or herself. Because as parents, you do not have the ability to email the instructor on behalf of your, your student. So when Kyle was mentioning, this is a great opportunity for students to enroll and still have that support at home, but then we are there as counselors, as parents, as district support staff to guide them in that communication should they need any coaching on the best way to approach that. But this is the opportunity for your son or daughter to learn how to self-advocate while they're still under your roof before they go off a hundred or thousand miles away to take a course. So thank you for that um, reminder um, in the chat because that is a very important piece to remember as, as parents and students. Uh, Donna, one of the parents is asking, or one of the students is asking, what are the list of DE courses available at Stratford? If they look at the invitation that we gave them for this particular meeting, all the DE and dual credit courses were listed on that invitation because that invitation was sent out individually to every parent and student that, of 9th, 10th, 11th graders. So that's there already present. Excellent. And on and just kind of off the top of our heads, the English composition, the first English composition courses, the history courses, chemistry, um, geoscience, algebra, algebra. Co college algebra, and, and then college pre-calc are the courses off the top of my head that I remember that are being offered at Stratford High School through the UT on-ramps program. That's correct. Any other questions? Uh, one of the questions was um, about the student, one of the Stratford specific questions was about students entering their courses. We have been working with the uh, students. We've worked with the um, rising seniors. So the juniors, we were in their classrooms Monday and Tuesday and the students zoomed into the class Today was um, sophomores along, and tomorrow will be sophomores. Freshmen will be Friday and Monday. And then when we get back on the 12th, the kids will be um, Zooming again with us, and we'll be working with all the students together at the same time, entering the coursework into the uh, Skyward for the students. So the students will be actually doing that at the same time. We have told students that if they have any questions to submit them to the Stratford counselors at springbranchisd.com and we'll be answering those questions as we can. 
because of the fact is that we're not in the class in our offices very much this, over the next two weeks. If they'll send it to Stratford Councils at springbranchisd.com, we'll answer those questions as we are available. So that way we can keep everything moving for those students. And a question that just came up about the science classes through HCC and the only science course through HCC is the biology. And I believe that when you look it up, it says for non-science majors. So if biology is something that you're looking to major in or science, I would talk to the institution of interest to you to see how they would count biology 1308, 1309. So, and the, um, we had a, a request to show the courses that are offered through HCC. So it's the English 2322 and 2323, which is the British literature, the government, and then the English 1301, 1302 for those students who didn't take on ramps in 11th grade, and then biology, um, next year, 1308-1309. So that's currently um, the courses. Any other questions? Well, if there are no further questions, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. And we um, want to say any questions do arise and, and things that you still want clarification on, please feel free to reach out to the counselor at the school. You can also reach out um, to me. I'm at the district um, and I'll type my email address in the chat so that you have it. So, um, and thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And we um, are excited for your students to have all of these opportunities to earn college credit. The question about it being posted on YouTube, it'll be on the SHS channel. Do you know when, Jim?